Hello, Didier Stevens here, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. I'm going to do the analysis of a malicious document with VBA code that uses uh, UTF-7 to uh, decode shell code and execute it. So let's take a look. I have the sample here and I run OLEDump. And so it's an uh, OXML file because uh, it contains word vba project.bin so it's a docm file and here this stream contains macros so i select this stream v it's rather large so indeed a lot of output let me summarize this with a plugin i use often vba dco so this one will look for declare statements and create object statements things like that okay and here we can see different declare statements and here also and then them being used um, it's not that easy to understand because of the obfuscation that is used for variable names and function names and so these these letters here they these identifiers look quite similar, but they are not. So the thing that I have in the plugin is to generalize identifiers like this into something that is easier to read for us. And you do this by using a plugin option, plugin options, because these are options for the plugin, not for all them, but for the plugin. And here, option J for generalize. Okay, so, and here it already becomes more readable. You can see here an allocation of virtual memory, multi-byte white car, car, and then internal in um, U languages. This, this can be used to start the execution of, of shellcode. This is to allocate memory for the shellcode, and this is some kind of conversion. And we will take a closer look later on. And you see this twice, okay? But most likely that's because it's for 64-bit and 32-bit shellcode. So the two shellcodes will be in here, 64-bit, 32-bit. So we can look at the complete code with generalization using option A, plugin option A. And then we have here all the code. Okay, so here you yeah, have document open. And indeed, if Win64, we call this subroutine or function, and otherwise this one. So identifier 28, that is for 64-bit, and 33, that's for 32-bit. So we can predefine our own names with option P. And I'm going to say identifier 28, this is a subroutine. 64 and 33 that's a subroutine for 32 bits okay and that's what i get now let's take a look at all the code here so declaration yeah and here subroutine sub 64 an declaration of an array of bytes 5000 bytes here identifier 29 so this is probably the array that will contain the, the shell code and indeed here you can see identifier 29 position 0 assign it hexadecimal value to be uh, ampersand h is an hexadecimal value in uh, vba here ampersand h 56 okay we're going to try to decode this but first i'm going to replace 29 with something that is more easier to understand to rock so it's an array of bytes for 64 bit code okay yeah here we can see it let's scroll down so here allocation of memory multi-byte white car uh, here you see our array here of bytes with 64-bit shellcode is transformed with the 
multi-byte white char function. And then here we have the subroutine for 32 bit. Identifier 34 is the array again. 34, okay, so I'm going to say 34 is an array of bytes for 32 bits, like this. And that is how our code looks now. Well, that is uh, easier to understand. Here you can see again multibyte char array of bytes 32. Okay, so what is this multibyte to white char? So it's an um, API function that converts strings to UTF 16. So this is the definition multi byte to white char uh, maps a character string to UTF 16. And how is the conversion done? It depends on the code page. And the code page that is being used here is 65,000. And if we look further down in the definition, 65,000 is UTF-7, okay? So the code here that is put in the array, that should end up to be UTF-7 encoded shell code that we have to decode and then analyze. Okay, let's now extract the hexadecimal values and convert them to binary. So first I'm going to grab all the lines that contain AB64, uh, so references to the 64, the array of bytes that contains a 64-bit shell code. And here we have all the hexadecimal values. I'm going to extract them with my R research tool that works with a regular expression. A regular expression is ampersand h dot dot, so twice any character like this. Okay, and as you can see, I have extracted them here. Now I just need those two here. And as you can see here, if it's a null byte, then it's not two characters, but uh, two hexadecimal characters, but a single hexadecimal character, and then a, a double quote. So, I'm going to define a capture group like this. Then I just have the hexadecimal value and then let's just do a grep for the colon here. Okay, yeah, so and it's only for null bytes that we have this issue. So I'm going to uh, use the stream editor to search and replace zero colon by zero zero globally like this and then here we have zero zero so now this can be properly converted to binary with x to bin okay and this is utf7 code utf7 code there's not a real formal uh, definition as uh, explained here, but Python can also do the, the translation. So that is for the 64 bit. Now, since we have introduced identifiers AB64 and AB32, I can quickly modify this command to grab for AB32, and then I should get yeah, here other code, and that would decode to 32 bits. Okay. So I'm going to now tr transfer, convert this from UTF-7 to UTF-16, like uh, the function here, multi-byte to white card does, but I'm going to do this from Python in my translate program. I'm going to operate on all the data, not on a um, byte per byte uh, uh, instance, but um, on the complete data in one go, so I have to define in that case a function, a lambda function. It uh, has one argument, the bytes, the data. And so the data here are um, bytes and I need to, um, to decode the, those bytes to 
a string using UTF-7. Like this. And then I need to encode this again to UTF-16. And just like the Windows API function does. And let's see what we end up with. And we get an error here. UTF-16 codec cannot encode this character in position 54. Let's try this with the 32-bit shellcode first, see if we have better luck. Okay, it's the same error but different value and, and, and a different position. Okay, and that is indeed the uh, issue you can have with UTF-7, uh, the, the definition uh, the definition that is in Python and the definition that is in Windows API is probably a, a bit different. Now let's see if we can just, uh, as a workaround, ignore these errors. So I'm going to say ignore these errors. And then I do get binary data and after that here uh, assembly code. Right? So that's abnormal that this assembly code is present here. It, it shouldn't be present. It's probably an error that the uh, malware developers made is to also include the part of the assembly code. But this here is uh, the actual binary data which we can uh, disassemble with the netwide disassembler. So this is 64-bit code and I'm reading from standard in. So this doesn't look right. Let me, oh yeah, I, I made a mistake. So this is AB32 and I'm disassembling it as 64-bit. So that's not what we should do. We should look here, select the 64-bit. Okay. Here you have the, the shell code. Now the FFFE, this is the byte order mark from UTF-16. So that's not actually part of the shell code. It's a, it's a result of the translation in Python. But then we have an op, a push and so on. And here you can see a small loop with an XOR. Right? So it's an XOR with one B, but before the XOR there is also a, a not of this. So this is actually the same as an XOR FF. And then there's a small loop here. So the, the payload is probably encoded with um, an XOR FF XOR uh, 1B. Okay. So we can use calculator. So one, no, hexadecimal, 1B here. One B XOR FF E4 that uh, should be uh, the actual key for the decoding. So instead of disassembling. Let's translate this. And this time I'm going to do this byte per byte. So byte XOR with E4. Mm -hmm. And then we have something here. So let's extract the strings. Okay. Here URL mom and this uh, URL here. But as you can see, uh, the URL is not properly decoded and this is probably because of that UTF-7 error that we got huh? that I instructed Python to, to ignore. So I did something else uh, to, to fix this. I'm actually uh, as a second solution that I explained in the second diary entry, I'm um, using the API function through Python to do the decoding. And I have a small script for this, decode UTF-7. So I import C types so that I can call uh, API functions, Windows API functions. 
and a small definition of a function decode UTF-7 that receives the data. I reserve 10,000 bytes and then I call multibyte to Whitehawk with 65,000, flag zero, the data as input and here the result as output and then I just return the result. Now two things, this only works of course on Windows, if you do this on Linux, well this doesn't exist, it will not work, so this works only on um, Windows. Second, also be sure when you do that, that you are not using API functions that would execute code, eh? like that uh, enum function that is used to execute code, and don't use that unless you do it in a sandbox where you uh, run no risk when the machine is infected. So this is the function that I'm going to use. So I'm going to load the script, the decode script, uh, full read, I pass everything, and the function that I use is decode UTF-7. And now this time we get this. Again, looks good. Let's translate this. So do the XOR. So byte E4 and then extract the strings. And now we have a proper URL. And now I can do exactly the same for 32 bit. And indeed they, they use the same key. It's the same URL except this, this one ends with PNG and this with ICO. Now, if you are not able to understand assembly language and, and find the key, you can also try to do this with my XOR search tool. So XOR search, we read from standard in and we will look for keyword HTTP, for string HTTP. And then here it, it found this string with XOR E4 at this position. Now XOR search will print out, if I'm not mistaken, 40 characters by default. So if you want more, you have to use an option length. And let's say that we want, for example, 100. And then here we have the complete URL. And if I do that with 64 bit code, then we have this URL. Now, searching for HTTP here with XOR search works because the URL is properly uh, decoded. But remember from the Python UTF translation, we had an error and the URL was not actually HTTP, but HTT and then something else. So this would not work. Uh, you would have to look for another keyword or try to decode everything and, and run it through some recognition patterns like uh, as follows. So let's go back to that decoding. Okay, so here 64 bit. Yeah, and here I do the decoding with Python and not with the Windows API. And let's run XOR search, reading from standard in, and we search for HTTP, and now nothing was found. So what you can do then is instruct XOR search to dump all of the strings that it finds from standard in like this, and then you get yeah a lot of output where you have to search through. And you can search through that with my tool RE Search, for example, and look for different patterns that you would encounter in malware. And let, let's just search for all the patterns. Okay, and here now it found the domain name worldoptions.bus. So let's grab for world options like this. Okay, and then here you can recover the malformed URL.